We told you Illinois and Drexel. That is the 116 matchup. And then Loyola, Chicago, and Georgia Tech is the 8 9 in the Midwest. What do you think Sister Jean is praying for right now in the second round of matchup against She's uh, trying to figure out how to attack that zone. Exactly. Georgia Tech and make sure they take exactly. care of the ball. Because those dudes will turn you over. Yeah. I mean, it is hard to simulate what they do. That's a really good passing team, Loyola. But Georgia Tech disrupts you. And Jose Alvarado is hard to play against. He's a one man defensive disruptor. Yeah. He's bigger, but he reminds you a little bit of Muggsy Bogues with yeah. the way he's able to take the ball from you. And mm -hmm. anything below the rim belongs to him. That, those are two really good defensive teams, mm -hmm. and, and they play differently, but they're hard to play against. And Cameron Crutwig, I mean, dude is 6'10", handles the basketball out front for them. All of their offense pretty much runs through him. He's a terrific passer, so he would be the perfect guy to put at that free throw line area against that Georgia Tech zone. I, I think the Oklahoma State in a 4-13 matchup against Richie McKay and Liberty there, I, I thought Oklahoma State would be seeded a little bit higher than this. Uh, the Flames winning the Atlantic Sun, maybe the best uh, individual player in the tournament in Cade Cunningham. Yeah. Uh, do you like the seed here? Do you think they should have been seeded a little higher? I, I thought I thought with the way they finished the season, I thought they would be a little bit higher. But that's going to be a that's really going to be a terrific pace. game. This Liberty team, can, this, this Liberty team, they're not as good as defensively as they have been in the past. They extend their defense out a little bit more. They play a pack line, but they play it out a little bit more, and that could actually work to Oklahoma State's benefit. You know Darius McGee, big time shooter. Yep. Darius uh, McGee, and then Elijah Cuffey is a defender. I, I think that's a really rough draw for Oklahoma State. Really rough. Because if they get Tennessee in the second round, assuming they beat Liberty, which is not going to be easy That's to right. do. Richie yeah. McKay mm -hmm. was under Tony Bennett. They play a lot like Virginia, and, and they're good. They're really good. And Oregon State is playing its best basketball after being the champion of the Pac-12 tournament. And by the way, I, when we start to fill out the bracket, I told you guys in our meeting room earlier, I said uh -huh. there are only two teams in the whole bracket that will keep me from picking Oklahoma State to go to the Final Four. Uh -huh. One of them was Illinois. <laughs> so there you go. Of course, naturally, they got to match it up against each other. Your work Sandy, is done. San Diego State and exhaling in northern New York State as Syracuse gets in. They don't have to do the first four games. San Diego State against Syracuse. San Diego State is a terrific defensive team. They are physical. They defend. Matt Mitchell is a big front court guy at about 6'6 that plays downhill and kind of can really rebound the basketball. Uh, Mensa is a terrific shot blocker. San Diego State is hard to play against. They execute in the half court better against man than against zone though. Yeah, and, but Jordan Shackle can really shoot it. Terrell Gomez, the same thing. Uh, they're. they're I would favor San Diego State in that game unless Buddy Beheim goes off again. Now, Syracuse doesn't rebound the basketball very well on their defensive backboard, but San Diego State, other than that, doesn't have a whole lot of size, and so they shouldn't be able to protect the middle of the paint. You've got West Virginia and Moorhead State. Moorhead State winning the Ohio Valley Conference. They've got some size up front. Johnny Broom, let me tell you something. That dude, 6'10", freshman, block mm. shots, yes. runs the floor, averages about 14 points a game, nine rebounds, really talented. They have defensive confidence. And speaking of Coach Spradlin, he really believes they are committed on the defensive end. I'm not sure if they're athletic enough in the perimeter, but that team can really guard, and Broom is no joke. Yeah, tonight Broom is really good, but one of the things that, that Preston Spradlin does with this team is they splice in uh, movie scenes into their, <laughs> into their film. Uh, so those guys love watching film because of the different movie scenes they splice in for him. But let's not forget, though, he's going to be playing against a veteran in Derek Hover on the interior who's so hard to guard at 6'9", 6'10", can play with his back to the basket, great on the low block, and loves to get over that right shoulder with the left hand. That's a big assignment for the young freshman. So you say it's one movie, not a double feature? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> And how about the joy that they're feeling on the banks of the Raritan? The State University of New Jersey, for the first time in two decades, has made it into the field, and they draw Clemson. Yeah, that's first to 65 wins that game. <laughs> both of those teams they're have really twice. struggled <laughs> offensively, but both yeah. of them are really defending physical. I, early in the season, I was absolutely in love with this Rutgers team. Sure. Ron Harper Jr. is a big physical guard. Monte Mathis is extremely athletic, and Miles Johnson protects the rim. Mm -hmm. I think Rutgers has a chance to advance not only this game, but potentially past this game. I really like their team. Don't, don't you think for Rutgers, a little bit like Wisconsin, getting out of the Big Ten is going to help help their yeah. outlook a little bit? It's a, it, seeing somebody new, they're going to play like they did earlier in the season. Yeah, Clemson can get stuck on the offensive end, so it's going to be important for Nick Honor to be able to create offense for himself. He's one of the only guys on that team that can make his own shot. 
Mayor Sims, though, he can guard multiple plays. I just don't yeah. know if Miles Johnson, I think he can go out on the floor, move his feet, and guard him on the floor. <laughs> Very good. The 215 matchup, the champion of the American tournament, it's Houston against Cleveland State, the winner of the Horizon. Now, this is Cleveland State's third bid. In their first bid in 1986 as a 14, they took down Bob Knight and in Indiana, went on, and it took David Robinson and Navy uh, to knock them out. Where well, they made it in 2009. They knocked off Wake Forest as a 13 seed. They won as a 13. They won as a 14. Chances to win as a 15? No. None? Well, you never, you <laughs> never loved them. 15, 15s are 8 and 132 in the first round, historically. Now, Dennis Gates has done a remarkable job. Torrey Patton's a really good player. Trey Gomillion is a linebacker in shorts. <laughs> They're good. But that's a that's a tall order you're asking them to, to pull off to beat Houston. Houston is tough as nails. They offense even if they shoot it poorly, which they do a lot. Yeah. Uh, they offensive rebound, and I don't think Cleveland State can stop them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.